I'm Mary McDonnell. Um, I've put on a little bit of weight and moved some hair around. Previously on me. Um, how's everybody doing? How many people left? And, and obviously it won't get answered because they won't be here, but how many people left when they found out that it's Aaron Douglas and not Mary? More people came. Don Pardo, tell that guy what he's won. <laughs> Holy cow, it's like, I can hold the microphone here and you can all still hear me. This is kind of cool. Um, like your shirt. You like my shirt? Yeah, this is my buddy Josh. He does a comic called Mighty Moose. And uh, I am going to voice the Mighty Moose. Oh, yeah, so check him out. He's cool, Mighty Moose. And then there's like this duck that's super badass. It's a Cylon duck. The way ducks should be. Exactly. Ducks Unlimited. These sit-down ones are always so weird. I feel like I'm at a panel and... I, well, I kind of am at a panel, I guess. This is Bo Bridges Cups. 25. Do I hear 25? So I guess I'm my own moderator, my own uh, guy sitting here, and uh, this is um, Jamie Bamber, everybody. He likes to sit further back. He's a bit pretentious. This is Mark Shepard. Uh, Tomo down there at the end, Tomo. And uh, I didn't bring any girls. Well, Candace is a girl, so she's... So the show's over. Who's bummed? Yeah. Who hasn't seen to the end? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I know you're lying because I know you. So, um, good ending though, huh? Yeah. Is there a better way to end a program? A really outstanding program? I think Ron Moore really just kind of hit it out of the park and wrote his opus. And uh, I think he used up his brain, though, because he's kind of dumb now. <laughs> he just sort of sits in the kiddie pool and drinks scotch. <laughs> and do, does podcasts of his own day. <laughs> it was really interesting. I woke up this morning and had a piece of toast. <laughs> <laughs> the smoking light is on. <laughs> oh, God. Crazy, crazy man. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, Mary sends her love and her deepest regret regrets for having to uh, take off this morning. But as some of you probably know, uh, the Battlestar family lost one of our dearest friends and one of our uh, best producers, Harvey Frand. He's been around in the industry forever. He passed away, um, gosh, I think it's about a month ago now, three, three weeks, a month ago. And uh, today is the memorial service. And I was in Toronto anyways, and I called Mary and I said, uh, um, I will come and do your panel and do your table if you need to take off, because otherwise there wouldn't be a Battlestar panel, because there was, Mary was the only one, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Fan Expo people are wonderful and gracious to allow me to come here and be with all you all and uh, let Mary go. So thank you to Fan Expo, thank and uh, yeah, Mary sends her love. <laughs> so, um... Why don't we just do questions? Because I really don't have anything else to say. Because <laughs> Bo ate all my time. <laughs> Kidding. Gentlemen, sir, red shirt. You're the red shirt. You're going down to the planet. You're done, dude. <laughs> Even in Battlestar Galactica, we send the red shirts to the planet. <laughs> Here's the sinus for the day.
right of U.S. and I leave that stuff up to the political activists. That's not my job. <laughs> I, I, I'm an artist. I mean, I will give my opinion, but my opinion has no more weight or validity than anybody else on the planet. Um, I tell stories, I do art. That's, that's my thing. To, some people are pretty good at being activists, but it's not really my cake. I'll raise money for Cancer Foundation and Canuck Place and stuff like that, but when you start, yeah, go, go, let's go. Um, I can't wait till Toronto gets a hockey team too. It's gonna be really cool. That's why Hamilton can't have one because then Toronto will want one. Um, so, oh wow. I'll take the last 39 years of the Canucks over the last 39 years of the Leafs in me day. Uh, but yeah, so that's my, uh, I think all the Leaf fans go, I know. <laughs> but that's my answer to that question. Yes. Uh, gentleman in the yellow shirt. Uh, last year you sort of let it out. There was a second earth before, uh... I did no such thing. <laughs> Dude, I can still be fired. So. <laughs> No, but I got in trouble for other things. <laughs> Showing up naked, that was not a good one. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, no, because I was here with Eddie, right? And Eddie is like an encyclopedia of spoilers. <laughs> oh, what, what's aired? Gee, uh, what episode just aired? Uh, not that one. <laughs> Never mind, don't watch the show. <laughs> then he starts talking Spanish and thinks it covers it all. I don't know. I have translator.com on my phone, Jack. <laughs> uh, all the way at the back on that side. You. The guy who said you. Me? You. Her? Wow. Uh, some people call us toasters, you call me metalhead. <laughs> I was wearing my anthrax shirt. Yeah. Hey, you were. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an all music fan, but yeah, my go to's are anthrax, of course, because they're very good friends of mine. Um, I like a little bit of everything else Rob Zombie, Metallica, of course. Um, uh, love Iron Maiden. Yeah. Best, concert, best metal concert I've seen. Anthrax opening for Maiden in uh, in California it was retarded. <laughs> it was so good. It was this somewhere back in time. It was just this past tour. Just oh, good lord, incredible. <laughs> Toronto Mods, There you go. And you can get in for like thirty eight cents, right? <laughs> and that's how many people go. It's still they're still owned by the Leafs. Yeah, good for them. Um, the gentleman across the aisle, just from that guy. My favorite story or anecdote from the series? Which one? Um, all of them. How much time do we have? So what pub are we going to after this? Um, well, a lot of you probably heard the stories last year, right? No? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, um... Mary's story. <clears throat> oh, a Mary story. I could really get in a lot of trouble with this. <laughs> Mary is the sweetest, most lovely, lovely woman there is. She really is. She's mom. Eddie's the dysfunctional dad. <laughs> um, he hits us. He really does. <laughs> um, no, Mary, Mary is just... Uh, unbelievably sweet and lovely and incredible and the best actor I've ever worked with by far and um, but once she gets the giggles it's over you might as well send everybody home because she just she will giggle she's like my mom at Christmas would get together with her sisters and there would be this cackling coming from the kitchen for hours and they would be talking and somehow understanding each other and they no, it was like a bunch of aliens having a conversation. <laughs> My 
mom was an alien, you know, Aunt Donna was like a T-Rex. I don't know. Bizarre. I don't know word, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but they knew what they were talking about. And it was the funniest thing ever. And, and it was just, and all the guys were like, more beer! So, um, yeah, that would sort of be, excuse me, the Mary story. It's not really a lot of them. If you ever run into Paul Campbell, he's the guy for the Mary stories. Because he puts a wig on and he can, he can do her perfectly. Um, you, the walk. It's unbelievable. He wears those control top. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't understand what that means. Um, uh, so, we have... Uh, anybody in the film business? No? Good. Um, we have to wear these microphones. These, did I ever heard this story? The microphone story? No? Okay. Uh, often you get a question at cons, one of the first questions from one of the ladies in the audience, because that's where they go, is boxers or briefs? Um, and my question is neither. And uh, I quickly learned that in one of my outfits, the orange one, I really need to have something under there. Because uh, we have these microphones that get clipped on the inside and the wire runs down either to a back in your belt, or the ladies, if they're wearing a skirt, they'll have it like way up high on their thigh. Or down in your boot, they just slide the pack in your boot and you run the, the wire that wire down. So they're always like handing you a cable and you're shoving it down your pants. It's really nice. Uh, so, and I would wear my oranges and I would do the big Superman. So I'm standing there, I'm gonna have to stand up for this. I'm standing there, and one of the sound guys, Graham, he's like 6'5, and he goes, all right, drop, drop it down your leg, and he's getting ready to put the pack on my ankle, and he's like this, and he's literally like right here. <laughs> and he's like this, and I'm on the, we're on the hangar deck, and it's packed, and there's extras everywhere, and the crew's all around. They like, we just got a wire hammer, and I go, oh, okay, yeah. Then he goes, drop down, and I go, okay. He hands me the thing, and I go, Bruh! I'm standing there, and I'm talking to somebody, and I go, Bruh! going this. Like this, and he's like, and I was like, oh! As Eddie says, you cold cocked them. <laughs> and uh, and I, I had no idea. I was standing there and went, it's breezy in here. <laughs> and I looked down and he's just, <laughs> I've seen things I can't unsee. <laughs> and so after that, it was, uh, yeah, that was sort of like after mid season one, I started wearing stuff. <laughs> or at least padding. We were padding on it. Um, yeah, that's one of my anecdotes. Good one, huh? You happy now? Okay, no more those stories. The gentleman back there, his hand up. So basically, a human relationship. <laughs> I thought that this is very real. Um, no, I, I, the writers on Battlestar, I mean, they're the best writers around. They, they took everybody in interesting directions that you never thought that you'd go, and you got to do things that you never thought you'd get to do. I, I trusted those guys implicitly from day one, just said, go, see what, you, see what happens. And uh, I loved all the stuff I got to do. It's very cool. Especially the thing right at the end with that little Indian girl. <laughs> Which was my idea, by the way. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you wanting to break my neck? <laughs> Rekha, come here. Pinky Tuxedero. I think it's all he did. <laughs> She's wondering if Ron Moore laughed maniacally while he was writing season 4.5. Uh, absolutely, I think he just sat <laughs> He got drunk on scotch and wrote it and then woke up in the morning and go, this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> was I writing with Lucas last night or what? <laughs> no, 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 not that Lucas. Lucas. Slavum from the Gorgon Schlagen. Off. Three. No, no, no. I love all three Star Wars movies. Yes.
What does the chief think of Rosalind? She's dead. <laughs> no, uh, the chief, what does the chief think of Rosalind? That's an interesting question. Um, pre or post op? Cylon ish. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was such a good scene. That's my favorite Mary moment. We're doing that scene with her. It was just her and I sitting and talking. And, uh, wow, that was incredible. Um, I think the chief's bright enough to get it, uh, that he understands that she is not coming from a military background. She's doing the best she can, and she's sort of having to, in a very uh, public way, hold everything together. Uh, and that he has to work with her. And then finally, that she eventually just listens. I think he got pretty frustrated towards the end of the show, though, that uh, really nobody was listening to him. And he probably should have just let the ship go to crap earlier. <laughs> um, your character kind of went through a big change when he became a Cylon. Were you... Because I was, was always a Cylon. <laughs> When he found out he was a silent, he went through a big change. Yeah. Were you happy with the changes that the, that your character made, like after he discovered he was a silent, or you know? Those those changes were. I mean, the writing sort of informs what you're going to do. But my choice was, those were my choices, and I wanted to see if they were going to work or not. And and I kept getting notes back from the producers saying, this is just genius, because every time something happened, I, I was just going, oh, God, of course. Of course the earth is blown to crap. But of course, oh, not my kid. Of course it's not my kid. I wish she was nailing some other guy. I mean, it was just this big cosmic joke, right? And, and uh, yeah, when, when the, the, uh, the Marines come in and arrest Anders and, and Chief, and as soon as the Chief turns around and sees come running in, he just, I, my choice was to go, ah, finally somebody figured it out. And, uh, but they loved it, though, you know, Producers kept saying, this is hilarious. Every time we see you, you've got the little smile on your face going, of course. <laughs> that should be the chief's new shirt. Of course. <laughs> right here. Well, what did you think when you, got the, when you got the script and you said, oh shit, I'm a Cylon? What, what did you think of that? Actually, we found out the day before in the read-through, the day before we started shooting that episode that, in fact, we were Cylons. They took us in one time, one, one other time into the room, into an office and explained it to us. So that was like beginning of December-ish. But I had seen a piece of paper that I wasn't supposed to see over Michael Reimer's house in September. <laughs> and I was flipping, oh, outline for uh, episode 319, 320. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Tyrrell. And Tyrrell was pretty good. Yeah, bullshit. Tyrrell. Now, but Tyrrell's a son. What? <laughs> I ran into the bathroom and I was like, what the hell is it? Like, Y'all right in there? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, just fight one. Um, so then I finally went out and, and uh, Reimer realized that I was, uh, as long as I make you laugh. Okay. And uh, Reimer was like, what the hell are you, oh, you're not supposed to look at that. Okay, so I had to be quiet for the three months until I officially found out. So I would go up to Ron and David and go, so, um, it's coming up for the chief. Nothing. Really, 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 nothing, nothing. Um, yeah, I felt like Stewie and Brian doing that. So, are you gonna work on the novel? So I thought I had, and so they would go, ah, oh, nothing, I liars. And I had to keep my mouth shut. And then they finally told me. I got on the phone so fast. I called Ron Moore's office. And, and uh, Ron Moore's office, Meryl speaking. Meryl Zerner Douglas, give me Ron Moore. Please on the phone. Get off the phone right now. <laughs> and Ron talked to me for about, uh, he took me off the ledge for about an hour and a half. And then we, uh, it was good. Yeah, I, I believed him at the end. I said, you know what, I'm going to trust you because you guys have done nothing but right by me up till now. So uh, <laughs> don't frack it up. Did you have to fake it when they told you? Oh, I have a what? Whoa, that's, that's a curveball. <laughs> but of course, I immediately called Hogan and Reka and uh, Truco. Guess what? No, no way. And then Hogan was furious. 
he was stomping around like a pissed off two year old. It was really great. <laughs> Uh, yes? What was it like fighting Eddie Almost in, um... Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Well, because it sort of devolved into this, I'm really going to hit you. <laughs> and there was a couple of times where we really tagged each other. And, uh, there was one part where he hits me, and I kept going down, and I thought, okay, on this take, I'm not going down. I'm going to stay up. <laughs> it was like the third time the chief goes down from a sucker punch. <laughs> Mexican dog. <laughs> so he, uh, so I'm like, I'm not gonna go down. Like, and I think he must have sensed it or something because he really smoked me. <laughs> Boom! I went down. I went, what the hell was that? Oh yeah, well, that's Tom now, man. <laughs> and I was throwing jabs, and he was, it was combinations. Somebody be yelling out these combinations like a one one two, which is a jab jab right. Hook. Well, so he goes, guy calls up one one two, and he's supposed to duck, duck, and then slide my right. So he goes, duck, duck, lean in. Come in with his right hand, and then his eyes changed color. I literally went, oh my god, I'm dead. Yeah. It was great. The fat ass comment was really kind of what got me going. Because that wasn't in the script. Fuzzy. Guess who's gonna die first? Oh, oh come on. Uh, the really handsome fellow with the glasses right here. The last season, whose idea was the hair? To shave my head? Yeah. That was me. That was you. I was, we had it planned so I could shave my head and then I'd have, between those two episodes, I'd have literally almost two full weeks off and I was just going to crash diet, shave my head, and then just go as machinist as I could. But the schedule got screwed up, and they had to shoot it back to back, so all I could do was, like, literally the next day, so all I could do was, I couldn't lose 30 pounds overnight. Or could I? Um, uh, Peter Griffin could. Um, so I shaved my head. They were, first they were like, really? I said, yeah, wouldn't be cool. Yeah, okay, kind of goes nuts. Boy, who hasn't shaped their head out of going nuts? <laughs> Why did she break up with me? <laughs> Shave something else to you, sir. Um, I don't know who that was aimed at. There's a hand back there. I have received no toasters, but I have signed a lot of them. <laughs> and I name everyone. Galen's Uncle Dave. <laughs> Speaking of Dave, did you see Dave Thomas is here? Yes. Oh my god. He goes walking by, I went, that's Dave Thomas. I was stunned. So want to meet him. Um, oh, Strange Bruce. Greatest film of it's one of my five desert island movies. <laughs> oh yeah. What are the other four? Strange Bruce, Strange Bruce, Strange Bruce, Strange Bruce, Strange Bruce. <laughs> I really want a picture. Um, what did I think of the Starbucks thing at the end? Um, probably the same as most other people, huh? <laughs> I I kind of like it though. I mean, we once see the thing that I really liked about Battlestar at the beginning is that other than the, uh, the fact that we're in space travel and all of that, it's relatively plausible. And then Starbuck died. Or did she? <laughs> and then it kind of went, okay, so we're going to be a little bit more sci-fi than just what we have been. All right, so if that's where you want to go with it, then that's where we'll go with it. And I kind of like it that she just sort of disappeared. I, I was never a big fan of the Starbuck character. <laughs> Seriously, I, I just... I, and I love Katie. She's one of my dear friends, and she's the loveliest girl and just one of the best actors around. But I didn't get Starbuck. I just, like, there's no redeeming qualities. Where is, where, is there any vulnerability? Is there anything that she does to make you go, oh, poor girl, she's just really trying. No, she's just really trying to piss everybody off. She just, 
there's nothing, she's not flawed, she is a flaw. She just, she's so beat up. And I think that they could have just written a little bit more humanity. Anybody should have been a Cylon, it should have been her. She could have been like the other Cavill. Uh, <laughs> hey, I can kick y'all out of here right now. Mother and I have worked long and hard for this vacation, not to have you kids screw it up. You stay on your side of the back seat. That's the line. Um, so yeah. Show's over. Who cares? I'm kidding. Hands? There. Oh, the thing in the dream house? <laughs> Some people are like, uh, the, uh, yeah, I think the, the real closure for, for Chief was at the very end, where he just went, thank you very much, good night everybody, good luck with all this. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was just another nail in his coffin of like, what the hell, I am, you people are, I don't know what you are, but I'm not part of it anymore. I'm leaving. I'm going to Scotland. <laughs> I hear there's sheep and scotch. <laughs> hey, his words, not mine. <laughs> yes. Uh, which of the other actors would you want to work with more that you didn't really get there a lot? Huh, interesting. Um, people that I didn't really get a lot of to do, yeah, I like, really like AJ. He's just a really good soul. Um, I'd have liked to have done more stuff with him. Uh, Mary, obviously. Except for the, the hard thing about working with, I know, a little Mary fan club down here. Yeah. <laughs> All you gotta do is say, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> the tough thing about working with Mary, though, is, is the relationship stuff is so, between her and the chief, she's usually giving them the old, oh yeah, well, <laughs> um, That kind of makes, it's really hard to work with because you're like, why are you saying these things to me after the take? You know, I'm like, Mary, stop being so mean. <laughs> because she's just so real and so believable. But, you know, just incredible. Um, I would like to have worked more with the big metal Cylons, you know, the Centurions, because they just don't talk. <laughs> they just sit there and open the beer. You can open a beer anywhere on them, too. They're like one giant 7,000 openers put together on his knee, his butt. Yeah. And there. Uh, so speaking of alcohol, uh, you declined to keep a little appearance on Tiki Bar TV. Do you have any uh, intentions of uh, making an appearance on any podcasts that are happening? Uh, any, I've done a few interviews today. I don't, what, what's Tiki Bar? Tiki Bar? You'll have to do Is there booze? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Is it like Margaritaville? Every show has a new alcohol recipe. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this con is like a oozer's heaven then. <laughs> Give me an Andromeda. There you go. So oh. TikiBarTV.com, they're out of the internet. Let me guess, you work for them? <laughs> but yeah, Nikki Klein did a little appearance on there, which if you Google it's hysterical. She did really cute. She's funny. She is. She's yeah, she's incredibly just... cheesy and, and pretty. Well, she is cheesy. I thought Kraft was cheesy, and then I met Nikki. She's the cheesiest. Um, no, not really. I sort of I shy away from the public spectacle and scene. I'm really uncomfortable in front of a large group of people. So I've done a few interviews so far today. Um, I don't remember who they are. Sorry, sorry. I do. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> but those will be up and about, I'm sure, all around. It's kind of answering the same questions that I've answered a thousand times, but it's still fun because I miss it. I keep thinking that's a hand, it's a camera. Yes, sir? It's like Simon Dave. <laughs> He's lost weight. Um, yes? Um, what do you, would you like to be doing in the future? What kind of uh, projects are going to get you excited? Porn. <laughs> No, uh, actually, I, I, the reason I'm in Toronto is because I just finished season one of a show, new show called The Bridge, which is going to come out in, uh, in the 
uh, in the, it's a mid-season replacement on CBS and CTV. It's a simulcast, so that'll be on November or January or something like that. Um, and it should be very, very cool. And then I'm also doing a, a straight to web show with Phil Morris and uh, Deckard Dreyer, who's producing it, called Emissary. Phil Morris, for those of you who don't know who it is, he, well, he's on Smallville, but he's also on, uh, he was on Seinfeld, he was uh, Jackie Chow's. Who told you to put bomb on? I told you to put bomb on. <laughs> he's one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my life. I love hanging out with him. And we're doing this thing called Emissary that he created, so that, was, that should be very cool. We're going to start filming that in the fall in New York. Um, other than that, I'd really like to do a, 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 a period war piece. That would be really cool. Just get porn? Yeah, period <laughs> war porn. <laughs> we go from country to country, raping and pillaging. It's the Douglas clan story. <laughs> Thousand years. <laughs> they all look like me. <laughs> wow. Supergirl likes that just a little too much. <laughs> Will you come to my country? Uh, Blue Jays? Um, Go ahead. I'm just going to check the score of the game while you're doing that. Uh, last year you were talking about a, a possible project, a Battlestar movie, along the same vein as Razor, with the focus on the Chief. Is there something still going on with that? It's or? not focusing on the Chief, unfortunately. Boo. Yeah, that's what I said, boo. boo. <laughs> I read the script and went, where the hell ah, Two pages. Uh, it's called, um, oh, it's 7 nothing Red Sox, end of the 7th. Uh, no, 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 oh, yeah. Let's go, Red Sox. As long as the Yankees don't win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, we, right, we finished shooting season 4.5. Uh, the .5 thing is so retarded. <laughs> Especially when it's like, okay, there's 2 and 2.5, and then all of 3. And then 4 and 4.5. To be released in 2017. It's not channel. Morons. Um, <laughs> Hey, I work for CBS now. <laughs> Number one network on TV. Uh, it's called The Plan. I'm kidding. These universals are very good to me. Great people. Um, they, uh, it's called The Plan, and uh, we shot it last September, and it's along the lines of Razor. It fills in the backstory. I think it starts about 15 days before the Cylon attack in the miniseries, and it's from the point of view of the Cylons who planned it. So it's the Cavils, the Dorals, the Leovens, and then a few of us other ones sort of show up for just little pieces to tie it all together, and then it catches up to, uh, I think it sort of catches up to somewhere in season three, maybe, something like that. But I, and I think that's November, but who knows? I mean, yeah. October 28th. Why the hell do I even bother? <laughs> I don't know, anybody ask me what the green button on the console does? You know, it's a good question. Does anybody here know? 78 hands will come up. Oh, 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 oh. That's a lot of diagnostic. We <laughs> have a room full of datas and I'm trying to answer the question. Unbelievable. <laughs> Madam. Um, your assignment, any chance there's chance of being See, I, it's like trying to wrap your head around forever. I don't understand this timeline of the sign. I'm sure you all with PhDs have figured it out. Geek PhD. Um, I don't get it. The Caprica is 50 years before us. So Bill Adama is Adams in Caprica. He's actually seven years old. So, but the Cylons haven't been built yet. That's what this show's about. But I'm 3,000 years old. And I. Just, I don't even, so, uh, no. <laughs> I really doubt that we'll be in Capra. I'd love to be, I think it would be very cool. In the, in the, uh, in Razor for the flashback shot stuff, I pitched this idea, this, I can't remember who it was, but they just went, ugh, that's a stupid idea. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then actually I told Ron about it after they'd finished filming, and he went, oh. That would have been so good. I said, well, I pitched it to one of your writers, and they said that he told you, and you went, no, it's a dumb idea. I go, I never heard that. I always thought that was genius. I thought that there should have been the final five just, like, in the background. 
So two people walk into a coffee shop and you know there's there's chief convention and just walks away. You know, it's just sort of everyday people and see who can pick up on it. Ron thought it was genius. And this writer who I don't remember actually, yes I do, uh, <laughs> shall remain nameless. I didn't think it was a good idea. So I Caprica, who knows? We might show up. I'd love to do it. I think it'd be cool. I miss the show. I miss all those actors, even though Caprica is different actors, but it's a lot of the same crew, and I miss those guys. So I'd like to. Yes. Do you have one of the Arab Sunday cut? Um, I don't know where the tie. Sorry? Tie. Tie? Colonel Tie? Colonel Tie. I met him with Stephanie Connection. Uh-huh. Father. I met him. Uh, yeah. Was he nice? Yeah. He's very nice, isn't he? He's very funny. He's very funny. <laughs> funny in sort of that creepy dad kind of way. <laughs> but yeah, yes. Okay, I was wondering who are uh, the practical jokers um, who were in the cast and what was the most memorable pranks? Um, our show was so intense that it was kind of hard to do the practical jokes sort of thing. Other than cold cocking sound guys. <laughs> really much of anything. Except for in the miniseries, uh, <clears throat> Eddie, God bless his heart, uh, in that 40 second scene, he said, all I needed was 40 seconds, and he's he, 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 that son of a bitch. And Eddie gets right in my face and goes, he's the XO of this ship. Don't you forget that, chief. <laughs> but we shot, the, we shot the master of that, and then we shot his close up, and then we went for lunch, and we came back from lunch, and it was my turn. I said, want to rehearse? I said, no, 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 no. Just, just turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> and he went off, and his lunch was like this cat poo burnt hair sardine sandwich with garlic <laughs> sauce. And he didn't shave, and it was like, I can't even tell the story because I didn't have to shave for weeks. My pores screamed. Got right up in my face, easy egg soap, and my eyes are burning, and I'm trying to hold it. <laughs> And then, uh, you get back to your post. So I turn and I walk away. I look back, they yell cut, I look back at him, he goes, Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll get him. One day he'll try and get back into the stage. <laughs> uh, that's right. Check his bags. Sir. The most expensive thing, like sold on that eBay auction, or just in general, probably the set itself. <laughs> that and my underwear, <laughs> worn once. Uh, I know in that set auction, the, the Vipers went for like 175 grand. Wow. Yeah, exactly. See, isn't it nice that it's accessible to the everyday fan? <laughs> God bless their hearts for making millions of dollars. Of, uh, uh, don't get me started on that. Oh yeah, and um, all those people who bought Chiefs oranges and Chiefs greens and Chiefs dog tags and basically Chiefs everything, they're in my closet, so I don't really know what you actually got. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of the auction. Give money to charity. Give it to the fans. Just give it to the fans. Just give it away. Don't charge them for it. Daily. Charge them if you're going to give it away to like, you know, local children's hospitals and stuff like that. But otherwise, hands before you get in more trouble. <laughs> Sir. Favorite personal episode? Uh, Flight of the Phoenix. Because <laughs> it had Mary in it. <laughs> uh, I love shooting that episode. I love the, the story of it. I think it's a, it's a one off that is sort of. it. Encapsulates, encapsulates the show. You could show that to somebody who really doesn't know what's going on and they would sort of get it. A lot of the other ones, like, okay, now he's married to her, but there's also two of them. There's two of those. <laughs> this guy's three, and uh, yeah, that's not his kid. <laughs> he drinks too much. <laughs> I do not. Yes? I can sharpen a pencil? Um. Uh, Am I mechanically inclined? No. 
She's kind of like MacGyver, isn't it? Uh, no, I could tape up a... Th I'm good with audio video stuff. I can figure it out. Like if you put me in front of a very, very simple one-stroke engine, I could probably make it work. But other than that, I have a mechanic. <laughs> it goes... <laughs> I'll be back on Wednesday. <laughs> Remember that. Thanks for bringing up such a painful memory. So he's directing the plan. Yes. Well, so do you have a secret plan for him? Is it going to get back to him? No, we already shot the plan, so I'm a little too late. But like I said, one day he's going to try and get back into the U.S. 9-11. Times a thousand. Number that nobody even knows. <laughs> well, PhDs in math. You know, here. Next. Boom. Yeah. Who? Oh, Callum. Oh, Callum. Callum and I actually go back before Battlestar. We're kind of buddies from other stuff. Yeah, he's. Um, just an unbelievable actor, and just a really good guy. Kind of a little quiet, a little quirky, but a really good, really, really solid guy, and an unbelievable golfer. <laughs> Cal and I used to golf together quite a bit, and uh, haven't had a chance in a while, because he's just so busy. All he does is work. Yeah, it's crazy, but a great guy. Amazing actor, too. Yeah. Yes? What's it been like going from like kind of the military It's funny, it's it, the because the, the cop drama is about a guy who was a cop for 11 years and then he becomes head of the police union, so it's all about he's running the union and helping cops uh, whenever they get into trouble. So it's like, didn't I already do this? I'm gonna grow my hair out and my beard and do this again. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the, the two characters, are, they're both kind of flawed guys doing the best they can, fiercely loyal and stands up, will take a bullet for anybody that, that is uh, close to him. So, not too much of a stretch. I really want to do a comedy now, because I'm not very funny, but I think I can probably get there with some good directing. Um, it's, I love your laugh. You're going to be in the studio audience every time. It's not going to be a laugh track or one of those signs that goes laugh now. It's just going to be you. So yeah, they're very similar, uh, very similar guys. They both drink and smoke cigars. And it's my life. <laughs> and they're Canucks fans. So, uh, you know, just smart all around. And, yes? Are you a personal fan of the genre, of sci-fi? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got a, I did an interview a couple, a few weeks ago, and they, they did a follow-up thing. We want to... Uh, post your favorite three sci-fi shows of all time. How the hell do you pick three? Yeah. You know, I was just like, really? Yeah, I gotta pick three? So, uh, yeah, no, but I mean, I grew up on the original Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, V, yeah. uh, Red Dwarf, you know? Woo! Yeah. Who knows the Arnold Brimmer song? Hi, how are you? You're very attractive. <laughs> You look good today. Try not wearing your bra next time. <laughs> What's your name? Lanolin? Lanolin? Like sheep? Um. <laughs> two minutes or two questions? Two questions, okay, two questions. Um, yeah, so that was that. Uh, yes? You mentioned some favorite uh, sci-fi shows. Mm -hmm. How did you like Buck Rogers? Oh, are you kidding me? You see who I'm sitting beside down there? <laughs> One of the most beautiful women ever to grace the screen. And this lovely Erin Gray. Oh yeah. And uh, Jill Gerard and I have become um, 
Seinfeld and Newman over the past few years. <laughs> every every time we see each other at a con, it always opens with the go f yourself. <laughs> I don't know about you, good. How you, how you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I love Buck Rogers. Oh, of course, Buck Rogers. One of the movies I picked was Time Bandits. Woohoo! I, I figured I figured I somebody would be reading it. Time Bandits. What's that? Ooh, good, I like him, he knows. Because that's sort of my, if I pick like the generic ones, I like the Terminator, then you, you kind of get the sci-fi fans go, he's not really a sci-fi fan. But you pick Time Bandits? Yeah, you big giant. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, uh, the, the, all the way to the back, all the way to the back. I didn't get any of that. Right <laughs> we're just sitting there and we're having a drink and talking. Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite scene ever of Battlestar. The, well, the six years of shooting the show, that was my favorite scene. It was just six hours of sitting and talking to that amazingly beautiful, giving, incredible woman. It was, uh, that's the one, that's my favorite moment in my career so far. I'll carry that one for a long, long time. Time. She's great. Yeah. Am I done? Or do I need okay, one more. Right there. Uh at the beginning of this year. Metallica shirt. Yes, I picked the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the beginning of this year, did they ever hit you guys that later on this year that one of you guys might be a Cylon and did you ever think it would be you No, I thought they just keep introducing new people. Oh, okay. Because there were little hints for pure like right at the beginning, the fact that you had, you and Boomer had a thing for each other and the fact that those nightmares that you had, and then with the, with a couple, and Cavill actually talking and saying, "Oh no, you're not." When in fact you really were, and he knew at that time too, from his point of view, right? Yeah, no, but couldn't you do that with almost any person if you picked any other character and just said, uh, "Where are the clues? Make um, make Duella Cylon. Look for clues, and you kind of you could sort of go all the way back." Yeah, I don't know. I it's weird. It would be weird. I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning on sitting down and watching it from the beginning to the end and seeing. Seeing what I notice, because it really does inform a lot of who the chief was. It sort of has this little bit of a gray past and all of that kind of stuff. Yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go? Okay, I gotta go. Aww. But I'm gonna be on my table till six. So <laughs>